All right, let's do examples two and three in section three, two. Um, so let's add the remainder theorem. So the remainder theorem um, is if we divide by a linear polynomial, so it's a special case only for linear, um, then the remainder is actually equal to the value of the function. So we'll see what that means in the next example. So this only works for the f of x over d of x, where d of x is specifically linear. Otherwise, this is not true. So the function is equal to the remainder. So these are basically two ways of finding the same thing. If I plug in c, it tells me the remainder. If I find the remainder, it also tells me the y value. Uh, so let's look at an example, and then we can convince ourselves that this is true. So in my first example, we're going to use the remainder theorem to find f of c when c is negative 1. Essentially, we're going to find f of negative 1 without plugging in negative 1. Um, why would we do this? We'll see this a little bit later. Um, but it will have a purpose, even though it takes longer than plugging in. So the trick is to do the function 5x cubed plus x squared minus 4x minus 6 divided by x minus c, which would be x minus negative 1 or x plus 1 in this example. So we'll go ahead and do long division. So x plus 1 goes on the outside. And then the function goes on the inside. 5x cubed plus x squared minus 4x minus 6. All right. So 5x cubed divided by x gives me what? 5x squared? Because I get 5x cubed when I multiply plus 5x, which will go over here. Oops, 5x squared. 5x squared. I like to line up like, like terms. And then we'll go ahead and subtract. So let's do a bright color. Right, subtract changes the signs, those cancel out. And we are left with negative 4x squared minus 4x minus 6, and we'll repeat the process. So negative 4x squared divided by x. So x would go into that negative 4x times, and when I multiply, it brings me back to negative 4x squared. And then negative 4x times 1 is minus 4x. Subtract, so the signs change. And it looks like we're just left with negative 6, which is my remainder, which is also my function value, as weird as that is. So this tells me that f of negative 1 is equal to negative 6 from the remainder theorem. So it's a very weird way to find the function value, right? It's more work, and we'll talk about why we're doing this later. Uh, but let's check our work. So let's check. You're probably not convinced this is true, right? So we'll just plug in negative 1 the old-fashioned way. So 5 times negative 1 cubed plus negative 1 squared minus 4 times negative 1 and then minus 6. So I get negative 5. I get positive 1, positive 4, minus 6. And let's see. Yeah, we get negative 6. So as weird as that is, the remainder represents the function value. Uh, so you're probably like, that's way too long. Why would we do this? Right? We talked about that a little bit. So we're going to introduce a shortcut. It's called synthetic division. It's going to make the process much more efficient, um, and it's going to be really helpful when we're finding all the zeros of a polynomial. So let's check out synthetic division. Um, there's really only one way to do it is just to go for it and see if it makes sense. Synthetic division only works when we're dividing by linear. So it has to be f of x over x minus c. Otherwise, if it's x squared or x cubed or anything else, you have to use long division. So synthetic is only for linear. So let's check out how it works. So we were doing 5x cubed plus x squared minus 4x minus 6 all over x plus 1. So what we're going to do is we're going to find the zero. So step one is find the zero for the denominator. So x plus 1 equals 0, x equals negative 1. 
So we're gonna go ahead and put the zero in the corner. So that's basically my C value always goes in the corner. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the coefficients up top. So the coefficients are five, one, negative four, and negative six. If you were missing a term, if there was no x squared term, we would use a zero. Um, we'll probably see that in later examples, but the coefficients go up top. So five, one, negative four, negative six. Cool. And let's just go for it, see what happens. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring down the five. And then we're going to do 5 times negative 1 and bring it up here, and we get negative 5. And you'll notice this is kind of matching the long division, right? At some point we had a negative 5, a negative 5. And then we subtracted, or we combined them, and we got negative 4. Notice when I combine these, I'm going to combine these two terms, and we get negative 4. So it is matching the long division. It's just kind of doing a shortcut. And then we're going to do the same thing. We're going to do negative 1 times negative 4. Bring it up, and we get positive 4. This is just one of those things we're going to do the pattern over and over, and it'll get easier. And then we combine them, and we get 0. And then I'm going to do negative 1 times 0. And we get 0. Put it up there. And then bring down, combine them, and we get negative 6. And this is my remainder. So we'll try this again, right? We're not gonna be experts the first time. It's just kind of repeat the pattern over and over and you'll get used to it. Um, what does the rest represent? So the rest is always just one degree less. So since we started with x cubed, this will be x squared. It's always one degree less. And so we'll get five x squared minus four x, and then this would be plus zero. So 5x squared minus 4x, which is going to match what we got before. And then the remainder. So it matches. This is our quotient. And then we often add the remainder, so negative 6 over x plus 1. Um, but we were only finding the remainder here, but just to relate it. So let's just try long division, uh, synthetic division again, and hopefully after a couple examples it'll make more sense. So you're not an expert yet, and that's okay. So let's try this next one. We're gonna do synthetic division to find the quotient and remainder for x cubed minus x squared plus two all over x plus three. And one thing I notice immediately is there is no x term, so I'm gonna call it zero x. All right, so the zero goes on the outside. So the zero for the denominator would be negative three. So that goes out here. That's always the zero. And the coefficients go up top. So one, negative one, zero, and two. If you miss the missing terms, you'll mess everything up. So make sure you check if there's any missing terms. So maybe I'll write out the steps on this one if you're not feeling confident yet. Um, if you do feel like you got it, um, go for it. So we're going to bring down the 1. I'll color code it. And then multiply by negative 3. We're always multiplying by the 0. And that gives me negative 3. Cool. And then we'll do this row in blue. And then we do negative 3, negative 1 plus negative 3 is negative 4. And then we multiply again. So negative 3 times negative 4, which is 12. And continue the pattern. Um, we already did that color. Let's do green. Um, we bring down the 12, right? We do... Um, so that's 0 plus 12 is 12, and then we do negative 3 times 12 is negative 36. And then combine, and we're done. What's that? Negative 34. So the one in the corner is always my remainder, and the other three will be my quotient. 
So let's figure out what the quotient is here. So we started with x cubed, so this will be x squared, x and no x. So my quotient will be x squared minus 4x plus 12. That's called the quotient. And then plus or a negative 34 over x plus 3 for the remainder. Cool. So we'll try this a couple more times. Um, you can also watch Desmos if you need more examples. So I'll see you in the next video.